Hi everyone. Today I'll be looking at the form, thematic structure and use of compositional devices in J.S. Bach's Invention No. 3 in D major. Invention No. 3 may be divided into three sections. The first section, which essentially remains in D major, introduces the theme in each part. The theme entries in the upper part and bass begin over tonic D major harmony, while the middle part's theme begins on the dominant A major. The second section moves through the keys of B minor, F sharp minor, E minor and G major, and introduces the theme fully in B minor and G major. And the third section is in D major, and reintroduces the theme in the tonic key. However, both of these entries are truncated. Structurally, the first half of the theme is constructed of three descending statements of this motif and eighth note group, while the second half then continues with the following motifs. In its upper part, the theme contains a 5-4-3 voice leading strand, but also contains a secondary descending line as the lower part of its built-in compound melody. When vertically aligned, these two lines move as a series of six intervals, but as written they produce a series of 7-6 suspensions, which when combined with this accompaniment produce 9-8 suspensions here, and a 7-6 suspension leading into the second half of the theme. This upper part also moves as a series of 3-5 intervals with the opening accompaniment. Melodically built into the theme structure are two characteristic features. The first is a probable secondary chord indicated by this accidental, which may or may not be treated as such depending on the key in which the theme is used. Here for example in the key of B minor, the necessary accidental for a secondary chord is not included. The second feature is a move to another key, which may be modulated into or simply suggested. Here for example, although the relevant G-sharp accidental from A major is included, the move to the dominant is not fully realised, and the second theme entry may be referred to as being on the dominant rather than in the dominant key. Here also, while a perfect cadence in A major occurs, the tonic is immediately treated as a pivot chord into B minor. It is only here at the conclusion of this theme entry in G major that a true modulation occurs, which here returns the work to the tonic key of D major. The theme's final quarter note beat then may include a raised sixteenth note or may be modified with the inclusion of this leap of a third. Although the harmonic accompaniment for each theme entry is similar, it is only the initial bass entry and the final truncated entries in D major which are almost identical with the G major entry. In each of these entries, a partial cycle of fifths progression is outlined by the root movement of the chords. As discussed in my previous video, in this invention, the theme and its accompaniment are combined using invertible counterpoint at the octave. The theme's accompaniment, however, which always begins by doubling the theme in thirds or sixths, is not continued in the same way with each theme entry. Here, for example, after doubling the initial few notes of the G major entry, the accompaniment continues with this tied quarter note figure and the entry on A major also, while essentially being constructed of 16th notes, also includes these 8th note pairs. Despite these variations, the theme and accompaniment still essentially interact in thirds and sixths. When a third part is added, or when the theme and accompaniment are in the outer parts, other higher level intervallic combinations may be found. Through the initial half of the entry on A major, for example, between the bass and upper parts, a series of intervals alternating 3-7 is used. Known as linear intervallic patterns, these voice leading designs are often found with melodic sequences and may accompany thematic entries, although these are not requisites. 
A linear intervallic pattern is a voice leading design made up of successive recurrent pairs of intervals formed between the descant and bass. In this invention, because the first half of the theme descends sequentially, a linear intervallic pattern is included over part or all of this section. We've already seen how the initial D major entry interacts with its accompaniment in a series of alternating 3-5 intervals and the entry on A major in a series of 3-7 intervals. The initial bass entry in D major includes a linear intervallic pattern alternating 6-3 intervals. Here in the third part of this entry, Bach again uses the same tied quarter notes found also in the entry on A major and in other later entries. The end of this entry then connects to these bars, which also essentially move as alternating 6-3 intervals. Here over the first half of the entry in B minor, the linear intervallic pattern moves as a series of alternating 8-6 intervals. In the earlier description of a linear intervallic pattern, it stated that they are made up of successive recurrent pairs of intervals formed between the descant and bass. While this describes their typical placement, it is not entirely accurate, as occasionally the governing voice leading intervals of a sequential passage may occur between an internal and external part. In these bars, for example, a 7-6 linear intervallic pattern is found between the middle and upper parts. As here, one condition which allows for the presence of a linear intervallic pattern between an inner and outer part is the use of a pedal or longer note values in the bass. A 7-6 linear intervallic pattern is also used through the beginning of the theme entry in G major, while a 6-4 pattern is used with the first truncated D major theme and the 3-6th pattern with the second. Another compositional device which Bach uses is Stretto. Here over this bass figure constructed of modified thematic motifs which are then transposed a tone lower, Bach uses this thematic motif beginning successively on the notes F sharp, E and A. While these motifs do not overlap, their accompanying lines do. These lines are also constructed of figures and motifs found throughout the work, or are modifications of them. Combine these upper figures then interact using invertible counterpoint at the octave, with this figure moved down a second, and its variant moved up a seventh. Interestingly, the upper figures always begin at the same interval above the bass figures. Here, for example, this figure begins an octave above the opening note of the bass figure, and this figure begins a sixth above this motif. The remaining sixteenth note groups of these bars are also taken from the theme, or are modifications of the theme's motifs. Harmonically, after this initial F-sharp minor harmony, this section uses primary triads and supertonic harmony to move through the keys of E minor and G major, and concludes with the G major theme entry beginning in bar 19.
I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.